Durant, a couple of crossovers, and has it knocked away. Good hustle there. Brown. The basket. Jalen Brown said, I had enough of this half court stuff. Let me get out of transition and bring the crowd to their feet. That was just two of Jalen Brown's game high, 34 points in the Celtics, 103 to 92 win over the Nets. Welcome to Celtics post game live. Tom Giles, Eddie House, Perk's going to join us in just a bit, but Eddie, <clears throat> somehow this team finds a way, right? Offensively, they just look like they can't get anything going, especially in that third quarter. But you saw the defense step up, particularly in that fourth quarter, and it leads to uh, an 11-point win. Yeah, and that was that was big time. When your offense doesn't have it going, you can lean on your defensive principles. You can leave, lean on your defensive habits, and they look like the defensive team of last year. You know, they had 11 steals, nine blocks. They were just so active, got a lot of deflections. They had 17 turnovers, right, and only 17 assists. You look at games when you have as many assists as you have turnovers or you have more turnovers than assists, nine times out of ten, you lose that game. They won this game by double figures, which means, which lets me know that it doesn't even matter if you have an ugly game offensively, if you lock down defensively and don't allow them to score. They, uh, they only allowed 92 points, which is the season low for any opponent, opponent that they played. So... Their defense stepped up big time tonight. And it wasn't just one guy. It was the whole team. They played great team defense. And you saw it lead to some of those transition buckets right there. And we showed you Jalen Brown. He's got 71 points combined over his last two games. Jalen Brown certainly been getting it done uh, scoring the ball. He's actually standing by with Abby Chin back at the Barclays Center. Abby? Jalen, this team just continues to find different ways to win. Tonight, it was defense. You had four blocks by yourself. How were you guys able to hold them down? Um, it's just, in this league, it's hard to win. So just trying to figure out different ways to play, um, different ways to win, and just having fun with the game. That's what it's about. Blake got a tribute video here. W what do you think about that? Um, I support it. You know, Blake is a great guy, great teammate. Ever since he's been around, man, he's made everybody smile. Um, he's made everybody feel good, lifted up our locker room. So it's great having his presence around. I talked about those four blocks, but you got off to an incredible start. 20 points in that first quarter. Only Paul Pierce has put up more as a Celtic in the first frame. What was the mentality coming out? Just being aggressive, you know, coming out, you know, making them have to guard me. Um, you know, I got it going and I just kept it going. You know, just I could play with the best of them. So I just like reminding people of that. I mean, we saw it the other night as well. How are you feeling out here on the court as far as comfort and confidence? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I'm, I'm feeling, you know, strong. I'm feeling I'm getting into a rhythm. You know, I'm starting to focus in a little bit more on what's in front of us, um, playing both sides of the ball. I'm starting to get a rhythm in, into the season. So I'm looking forward to the next few games. Right now, what's in front is this season-long road trip. How important, how good is it to get a win first one out? Um, it's great, you know, to start the road trip off like this. Um, we got a lot of big games coming up, so um, we can't take one game for granted. Tonight was a good game to come out and win. I um, mean, we did that, but tomorrow's going to be another tough game in Toronto. Jalen, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate you. All right, thanks so much, Abby. Okay, so Jalen, again, with the 34 points, the 10 rebounds, the four blocks, just getting it done in every way. He had those 20 points in the first quarter already, but he also had 10 in the fourth quarter in a couple of big buckets there when they went on a bit of a run when, you know, Brooklyn, it seemed like, wouldn't go away with those transition hoops. Yeah, well, that's, we have two closers. We legitimately have two closers. It could be Jason Tatum doing it one night. It could be Jalen Brown doing it another night. And that's a great luxury for Coach Joe Mazzulla to have in the Boston Celtics, knowing that even if a guy, you have two guys, you can't just key in. You know, you, you just can't key in. A guy right here step up and have a big game. And just, again, let's talk about his efficiency, right? 10 of 20 from the field 50 percent he I believe he was five of nine from three so now we're just just shooting the ball at an all-time clip in my book and just playing his game not allowing anybody to take him away from what he does he gets to his spot he's comfortable rising up he's a three-level scorer and I like what he said in, the, in that interview with Abby was I'm getting into a rhythm but I'm getting into a rhythm on playing both sides of the ball and I think when players have that locked in mentality on the defensive end the offense seems to always come with that he also had zero turnovers in this game. That's big time. Yeah, Jalen Brown, zero turnovers. The two assists, but, you know, in a game when, when he didn't have Marcus Smart, you're, you're kind of asking everyone else to step up in different ways, and he really did kind of stuff the stat sheet here, a couple steals to go along with it. But taking care of the ball is something that you always key in on, and, and Jalen Brown 
was huge in that tonight, especially when the Celtics kind of, they were still somewhat a little loose with the basketball. Yeah, and they were. And I think that as a team, they did a great job in the fourth quarter. Going into the fourth quarter, they already had 14 turnovers, which means they only turned it over three times in that fourth quarter. So that was a recipe for success. Taking care of the basketball, defending on the other end, closing the possession out with a rebound, and then getting out. Um, uh, they were at fast break points. When they got steals, they got out. They were We were up fast break, plus 13, 26 to 13. Um, in that category. So defense led to offense, and that's what you have to do. You have to find ways to win basketball, and it doesn't matter. It's not going to be pretty every single night. This definitely was a, a kind of a dry game as it was yeah. playing. It just didn't have a good flow, a good feel to it. Um, but they still found a way to win, and that's, that's, those are championship teams when they do that. It was a different energy, definitely a different energy than what we've seen from this team, especially, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're winning these games by scoring 130 points tonight. They go out and they win 103-92, right? So they, they did with the defense. As you mentioned, it was the fewest points that Brooklyn scored all season. And guess what? It's going to be games like this in the playoffs. Yep. It's not going to have games. It's not going to be a shootout every time. You will, this is how playoff games are going to be. Why are you going to have two or three of these games that you're going to have to try to, try to grind out and figure a way out to win? What do you like about the defense? I know that, you know, early on, you had Jason Tatum with that effort, uh, which led to the, the transition bucket. But also, you know, in the second half, it felt like, you saw them start to double Kevin Durant just at the absolute perfect time. Yeah, well, they were all uh, in sync with each other. They knew what the game plan was, and they, they didn't give them a steady diet or the same look. When they started doubling, that was different. He hadn't seen that all night. Then they started coming with a double team, forcing them to make passes, not, not being comfortable. And I think what really happened was guys took the individual challenge. They know how great Kevin Durant is. They know how great Kyrie Irving is as a scorer. So what did they do? They took the individual challenge, and they were locked in. And that's why you've seen the deflections, you've seen the steals, and you've seen the blocks. That doesn't happen happen if you're not locked in defensively and mentally how does this uh you know if, if you're Brooklyn you're coming into this game they won four straight but you go up against a Celtics team that doesn't have it and you still end up you hang around most of the game you still end up losing by 11 I mean what does it kind of say about the Celtics and where they are in the Eastern Conference especially when you're looking at another playoff contender as you called them in the pregame show with, with, with Brooklyn and the Celtics not even having their best game and being able to kind of win here somewhat comfortably. It lets you know when I, they said, was, are they a championship contender talking about Brooklyn? I said, no, they're a playoff contender. Yeah. They're a team that could get in the playoffs and possibly with the right matchup win a series because they do have two tremendous offensive players. But defensively, they're nowhere near where they need to be defensively to even be in the, in the talks of, of championship, uh, having championship aspirations. But the Celtics just played a fantastic game. It just shows how good we are. We're so far ahead of the Brooklyn Nets. We can have a game like this offensively, but still find a way to get a double-figure uh, victory. All right, 103 to 92 again was your final score. The Celtics go to 19 and 5 on the season. Brooklyn falls to 13 and 12. Celtics also 8 and 3 on the road.